Right, I'm sitting here with Stu Husband, Hamilton East, New Zealand first candidate, and we're just having a bit of a coffee and a chat. And normally I ask people straight off, the first question I ask is, um, why should we vote for New Zealand first? Just sit back a bit. Why, why should we vote for New Zealand first? But um, after seeing the thing on Saturday with Winston Peters, and um, I get the distinct impression that the why is pretty much in the name of the party, New Zealand first. So oh, I got a very yeah. distinct feeling from Winston that that is the whole concept of the party, New Zealand first. Great. Um, but if you want to expand on that and discuss some of the details, yes, Winston covered them, but for people viewing this, some of the details about um, why we should vote for New Zealand first um, versus anyone else for... You know, we, we've got some pretty strange times at the moment. We've got um, basically zero international travel. We've got um, people losing jobs, people... Um, not It's not as bad as it could be. It's not as bad as other countries, yeah, but people are losing jobs just because some companies have had to um, downsize and things like this, and we are in recovery. Our, the economy doesn't seem to have been hit as hard as a lot of people sort of expected, I don't think. It could have been a lot worse than it is. A lot of people feared that lockdown meant complete devastation to the country, and yep. it hasn't. here we are sitting in a cafe, we're yep. not having to wear masks. Very lucky. Um, yes, I would wear a mask on, a, on public transport, but... At the moment, while there's no community transmission, we don't have to wear masks um, to feel safe. Um, and pretty much life's back to normal. You wouldn't notice. It's not until you decide if you're planning where you're going to go for your, whole, your annual leave that you suddenly realise, oh, no, I can't go overseas. I've got a holiday in yep. New Zealand. Yep. But again, that comes back to the whole New Zealand first thing. So you can't go overseas. What about holidaying in New Zealand? New Zealand first, holiday yep. in New Zealand. Yep. Um, I have never been overseas, believe it or not, but I've travelled almost every part of New Zealand except Gisborne. Well done. Between the age of zero and now. A lot of the South Island was before the age of 10. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just, yeah. I'm pretty sure my, my somewhere in my Scottish and Irish ancestry there's a huge dose of gypsy... In there yep, somewhere. yep, same, <laughs> yep, same. But, um, yeah, so, so what, what, what things, out of, considering the situation we're in at the moment, do you think are the important things that New Zealand First are going to bring to Kiwis that they need to keep in mind that other parties potentially aren't going to cater for as, as well as New Zealand First would? Yeah, no, thanks for that. And, and I think, I think a key, key word for me is moderation. Yeah. You know, it's, I, I like New Zealand first um, and offered to stand for them three years ago in, in the Waikato electorate. Um, because I, I think I'm, I'm a true believer. Yes, I, I understand they're a, they're a minor party. They're a minor party coalition party. And look, I go back to what Winston said on the, on the weekend. And it's, you know, even the New Zealand Herald couldn't believe that that minor coalition party got 80 percent 80 percent not 18 not eight 80 percent of its policies it stood on in 2017 through that's so pretty good it's impressive you know and if you know politics and it, you know the, the the rantings we see on facebook are, are to me rantings of people who don't understand politics yeah so politics is about getting your policies that you've stood on through and over yeah. the line and i think they've done a fantastic job and you would have noticed on saturday that he made a point of not bagging Labour. Yes. He actually said, we've worked really well with Labour. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad to see that, because they have worked well. They've, been, yeah. they've made a, a, a brilliant government. The other the other thing I noticed he brought up was that where things didn't come to fruition, it's not because they were never bothered with it, it was because the agencies required to enact those things weren't ready to do so. Correct. And you, you can't put in a policy without the infrastructure around it. Correct. You need to make sure that infrastructure is there. Like, as you know, I'm standing in Hamilton East. Yeah. 
and and Hamilton East, I, I think Hamilton East has got a, a lot on its plate in yeah. the next few years. You've got regional council, which I'm a part of at the moment, as a councillor for Waiheo constituency, and you've got them about to move out into Central City here, into the Kmart building. Yes, so that's interesting. when you take 500 people out of those cafes, yeah. out of those lunch bars, out of all those small businesses in Hamilton East, well, what's going to happen to Hamilton East? You know, so, and, and I, you know, I, it surprises me that the... Um, it's like, like, like this place. I'm but, sure yeah. if, I, if I suddenly stopped coming in here, yeah. they'd, they'd have to recalculate their income. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah you're right. And, and you take 500 people out of those that small place in Hamilton East. And I'm surprised um, our MPs, yeah. that are already existing MPs here, haven't started looking at a way out of the way out of this you know, but, um, and that's what you know if you look at New Zealand first New Zealand first has a small business upstart yeah startup sorry it's yeah. got the startup for small business yeah and by jingos Hamilton East is going to need that yeah, yeah. or else it's just going to disappear yeah you know, and and um, we've got the water we've got a water situation at the moment where um, our mayors um, very kindly yeah given away 25 million liters a day to Auckland um, when they are in, when they are in trouble, however, when we understand what the river does, the river runs on a you have a allowable level yeah. that it can't go under. What about when small business wants to come into Hamilton East and you don't have the water anymore to give them? How are they going to start up? So well, these yeah. are all the, these are all the questions that um, you know. There's a vision and strategy for the Waikato River, which we all yeah. know, and um, you have to have. For the health or the Maori of the of, yeah. the of the river, it has to have a certain amount of water in it all the time. Yeah, otherwise it's just a mud puddle. Otherwise it's just a mud puddle. So we've given that water um, to Auckland. Yeah. And then we have to start thinking, well, okay, Hamilton East, we get some business in there, and we get some small business and employment, but how do they get water because we've given it all away? Yeah. So, and, and I can't believe our MPs at the moment haven't had the foresight to, to see this coming. So that's an interesting perspective. With you working on reg- being on regional council, right? Yeah. Um, you can understand the necessities for well that affect the whole of New Zealand, but in particular Hamilton East. Yep. From a regional council perspective, mm. that someone who is not in touch with that probably wouldn't realise to quite the same degree. Yeah, correct. And, and uh, you know, a, guy, uh, um, a lot of people on Facebook at the moment are saying, you're a dairy farmer from Te Hay. Why are you standing in Hamilton East? I've got a really simple answer. I've been part of the Hamilton East community for the last seven years. I've done three triennials oh, okay. in, in regional council. Yeah. So I've been part of that community for the last seven years. Oh, okay. And it was a few years ago I started to find out, what's going to happen when we move? What's going to happen here? You know, what, what, what's going to happen here? Because yeah. you take 500 people that all go and get lunches, all go and get coffees, every yeah. day, maybe twice a day, 1,000 coffees, you take all of that out of Hamilton East. And I don't, uh, you know, it, it's got some, you know, it's got some big pressure coming on it. Yeah. So I think it's going to need help from central government. Um, why do we, you know, why, why, why would you, how would New Zealand first help in that? Well, it's simple, that small, small business startup. Yeah, you know, it's going to be a must and, and I don't see anything coming out from National, and I don't see anything coming out from Labour in, no. in that respect. So um, I think New Zealand First has always been about, like you said before, New Zealand First. It's about the regions. Yeah. And that, and that and that's exactly what Hamilton is. That's when people say, oh, oh you're a farmer in Tao Hay, why are you staying? Because if the farming's not... Hamilton's still a, a city, which is, I'm pretty proud of, yeah. that, that we all work with each other. It needs the rural to work for it to work, and, and we are no longer a cow town. No, no. we are we are a, a, an actual city. Absolutely, what, eighty thousand people. Or something? Absolutely, we're on the verge of um, rethinking our our electoral boundaries. We're almost on the verge of having a third electorate in Hamilton. Potentially. Absolutely, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we, we're getting to that size, um, but we still have the connection to the to the farming from the point of view of. Yes, we have to think about ourselves as a city, but we are still closely connected to the farming community because it's what it's 
only a short distance to the boundary, and you're in. in, in well, you, you, I mean, we look at things like we talked about for business, you know, and you take the the uh, freezing works, the Fonterra, the Gallagher's. Yeah. You take all these out of Hamilton, right? Button disappear. Uh, and, and, and Hamilton's in a spot of bother. So, and, yeah. and that and that's what I was getting at before by saying we rely on each other. We work well together. We always have. Yeah. And even though Hamilton's getting big and becoming its own city, which is fantastic. Yeah. It's still, we've got that feel that we work in rural and urban yeah. really well. And, that, and, and you know, if you took the Fonterra out, the, the Freezing Works, the, the Gallagher's, and all these big employers out of Hamilton, we're in a little spot yeah, of bother. Yeah, you know, that, so. wouldn't, that wouldn't go well. <laughs> so the know. rural has, what I mean is the rural has to exist. We, so we, we're not we the place. We coexist really well. Yeah, we're not the place where a lot of big organisations have their head office. No. Yes, I think we've got a couple of government departments that are setting up their head offices here, and we've got the um, big inland port sort of just out of Hamilton yep. um, coming, and that's huge, going to be huge. Um, and I think that helps the big businesses that are already in Hamilton yep. justify not moving, yep. for Correct. one thing. Yep. Um, but again, it comes back to, and I've had this with other like, sitting MPs, talk about the fact that that's where the discussion between the MPs that are here for us in Hamilton and the, and that discussion with them and between them and council um, is what helps to keep things going smoothly and planned out better. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, Hamilton's got some major um, infrastructure um, stuff under the Three Waters. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of the Three Waters. But, yeah. You know, um, they've got some major infrastructure stuff to deal with. Yeah. It's no longer okay to put have a spill into the river every few months. No. You know, no. So that was a large <coughs> part of the discussion during last year's elections with the council when I was interviewing people was, was the whole Three Waters. I was sick and tired of the term Three Waters after a while. <laughs> um, but it is it is an important thing to. Well, it's it's going to bank. It, it has the potential to bankrupt the city. Yeah. Because the infrastructure costs so much, and, yeah. and this is what I'm saying. And you take all these, and this is what I'm getting at with the, taking all these people out of Hamilton East and the other employees, or the jobs out of Hamilton yeah. East, then dumping a 50 percent rate rise on them, and then doing this, and then doing that to do yeah. your infrastructure and all this. It's not good for Hamilton. No. So it needs some strong representation at government level yeah. to say, well, hold on, we're going to have to do this over time. These things, we're not going to go around bankrupting regions. No. You know, so we, we have to do this. So it's all great to jump in. And this is why, this is exactly why we need, a, in my opinion, this election vote, party vote, New Zealand yeah. first. Yeah. Because you've got to have a handbrake. Yeah. And, and if, if you don't have that handbrake and you get a certain type of government, which I'm pretty sure most people who are astute will know where the government's going to lie, and... You get that sort of government, it's got to have a handbrake. Yeah. And uh, I think national voters, I, you know, I, I, I've spoken to you know, several national voters, well, plenty, who have all said, and the astute ones have all said, oh no, 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 we'll be party voting New Zealand first. Because yeah. they know darn well that if they end up with a Labour Green government, they want to, they want some sort of moderator, some sort of moderation in there. Yeah. So we don't get capital gains tax. All these things that Winston listed off on Friday, capital gains tax, water taxes, um, you know, tax for this, tax for that. Yeah. So and that's, that's one of the discussions I had um, as I was leaving with one of um, Winston's minders, one of the people who was on Winston's yep. bus with him, yep. uh, who was standing outside. We got talking about um, what my father has always re- had always referred to as strategic voting and the fact that we know currently, we have to we have to remember we're in an MMP system, not a first past the post system. Yep. So, um, Labor's two ticks for Labor or National's two ticks for National. We have to forget that system, yep. right? Yeah. Um, and we do know that at the moment, currently, we're going to have a, either a Labor or a National led government, right? So we have to, de- as a voter, you have to decide which one of those you want or. More often, it's which one you don't want and vote for the other one. Yeah. Right? But then we need a watchdog. 
someone to Correct. someone to keep an eye on them. Correct. And yeah. and 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 who's middle of the road? Who has enough representation in Parliament? Yep. Enough seats that can say to them, "Hang on, hang on, you're getting yeah. a bit carried away yeah. here." Hold on, tight. And then that party, whether it's National or Labor, goes, "Oh, we've got to listen to you because you've got a lot of seats. We can't." piss you off too much. Yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. And that's again where the party vote comes. You, you, you vote for your politician in yep. your area and you vote for the party you want to stop them running away with it because a current government combination has done quite a good job of encouraging alternatives to cars and yep, I think that's something that needs to yep. keep on going. Yep. And I think part of that balance actually is, yes, it's well, we've got a Labour Greens NZ First government at the moment. Yep. And, yes, that's quite a nice combination. Um, I think the New Zealand First part and that is probably a very essential part of that. Absolutely. Yep. Now, I come from a predominantly Labour family, admittedly, but even I wouldn't want to see a predominantly Labour-led government. Yes, Labour, Labour-led but not labour control. Yeah. And uh, I think that's the thing with, um, you know, when you've got a left government, um, you know, being labour, left, yeah. left party in charge, and then you've got a left, far left group of, um, whether it's far right or far left, being act on the far right and um, the Greens on the far left. Yeah. It's always good to have that watchdog, exactly what you said, that in moderator the in the middle. Yeah. You know, just to keep the... Yeah. Just keep the light of day in sight, the end of the tunnel, you know, like just to keep it, you know, always check, fact checking, always yeah. just keep and it And I right. think um, a lot of the. Not to control the place, yeah. but just to. I think know. a lot of the policies of NZ First mesh well with what Labour wants oh, to absolutely. accomplish. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And I think that's why you see Winston on the weekend made a point of saying we've worked very well for Labour. I didn't hear yeah. bash Labour one time. No. Yeah, so yeah, he's, he said we've worked really well with Labor. And, and he's not the person that would be afraid to bash, bash oh, no. another party no. if he wanted to. No, he'd get stuck into them if he wanted um, to. Yeah, no, 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 he's, he's obviously genuinely We had a big happy. chuckle about the protesters yeah. outside the event. That was hilarious. And it was so funny watching Winston Peters have a bit of a chuckle over, yeah. over their antics. But, again, he didn't mind them being there. No. He understood that, from what, what my, this is my interpretation, he understood that protesting is a key part of our democracy because yep. it tells someone that something's not working. Someone said the other day, I oh, will call the call police. And I said, absolutely not. It's bloody, it's great they're here. You know, like, they're, well, you're out there chatting to them yeah, and having I, a bit love, of a yarn. I love seeing they, people stand yeah. up for it. They believe in it. You know, yeah. It's great. You know, and they were non-violent. They were, they were stayed out of the, you know, they, they just wanted their point to yeah. go across. But it's like I said to the lady um, that I was talking to, What happens if we go the other way and three kids die? Yeah. What are you going to be here then saying to me? Yeah. Yeah. You've got to come up with a solution. And that's because ter- at the moment we've got no kids dead. Yeah. Touch wood. We've had a really good run of no child yeah. deaths. Right? And so, if we parallel that, parallel that to COVID at the moment, if we go down National's idea of open up New Zealand early to anyone, right, well, what happens if more people start dying from COVID Correct. and it gets to the stage where it gets a hold in the community like it is in America and UK and things like that? Let's ask the Victorian Premier what yeah. he thinks today. Again, this comes back to putting Kiwis first. Health and safety first. We need to be looking at the people. What is it? If you look after the people, the people will look, look after, after the economy. Yeah, people, people, people. So if we look after the people and keep everyone healthy... People are now going running around spending money in businesses and yeah. and all that yeah. thing. I've been able to get my bike fixed and various other things done, which has put money into a bike shop. And this calf, this calf, I should have an automatic payment going to them, but that's beside the point. <laughs> and this sort of thing. So these businesses are carrying on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think... We're if, very lucky. If people who want to go on holiday and are moaning about not being able to go overseas turn around and go, how much of New Zealand have I seen? Again, 
what about looking at New Zealand first? Correct. What about taking the New Zealand first, in the broadest sense, approach and going, oh, I'll go to holiday in the north, dead Northland. Right. Yeah, dead right. You know, we, we um, went down to Naseby, which is a little place to do dog sledding, can you believe? Dog sledding? Dog sledding, yeah, yeah. And uh, they, they have uh, um, behind the snows, so, yeah. so huskies, Yeah. and you go dog sledding. That's bloody fantastic. And then, and then you... Um, um, oh. We went and we stayed in a town called Naseby, and sadly the big hotels just burned down, which was over a hundred years old. Oh no! Um, so and then, but thought, what's this big building here? And went in and thought, we'll go down and have a look at this, you know. And there's a big building in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's the biggest curling rink in the southern hemisphere. It's where all the international events are held in the middle of nowhere in Naseby. In the central oh, for table. real! For real, <laughs> it's the biggest curling rink in the in in the southern hemisphere. So, that's the thing you notice when you start exploring New Zealand. That's what I mean. You find yeah, places yeah, in yeah. the weirdest, strangest places. That and we're just like, what, what is this? You know, like, yeah. you know just, and we had a fantastic trip. You know, like better than going overseas. Yeah, you know, just and seeing your own, you know, everything that's going on. Another one we went to Stuart Island. Yeah, and, and yeah. that was just great. Kiwis That's running only, over your feet. That is the only other place I haven't been to in New Zealand. Oh, it's great. You, know, you go down, the, the, there's, there's a rugby ground. Yeah. And you go down to the um, rugby ground, you just stand on the rugby ground, the Kiwis just come around and just run over your feet. Oh, there's hundreds of them. Heaven. There's hundreds of them. Yeah, it's oh, just so would, cool. I'd yeah. love that as a photographer. I'd just lie on the ground oh, and wait yeah. for them to come around yeah. and just take photographs there's of them. hundreds of them. And because um, I, I don't know if you um, know a guy, Clyde Graff, he's quite a activist against 1080, you know, against yeah, 1080. Yeah, I've heard of them, yeah. Yeah, and the Graff brothers, and they do uh, Poison Paradise and stuff like that. Yeah. And anyway, he told me about Stuart Island, he's never had 1080. He said, you've got to come down, you've got to come down. So I thought, oh, blow it, right, we'll go down. And we went down, and you just wouldn't believe the Kiwis and the yeah. Wickers and the, and the wildlife. It's, yeah. it's, it, it's the advantage of having basically being an island with no pests on it. No predators. Yeah. Um, no no natural predators. Yeah. So. Um, so and just before we finish, um, NZ First's approach to things like health, because um, I'll let you mention it, but I, Winston said a few things to do with to do with health and doctor visits and, and, and optometry. You know, I, yep. Um, so just a brief rundown on, on New Zealand First um, ideas on what should be available to people from a health perspective? Yeah, so he's he's um, he was talking about referring to there about the sixty plus, yeah, um, and that they get one free doctor visit a year for a checkup, okay, and they get the um, an eye check, yeah, you know, free eye check because um, it's it's if we can circumvent problems by checking people and finding the problem, yeah. then you save. Millions, literally. Later, because yeah, he gave some. Up in, he gave some details briefly about um, the one free doctor visit. Yeah. And the um, ongoing effects of that. Yeah. And, and the ongoing effects of that. How that. What that mitigates when it comes to dealing with someone who ends up in the A and E or, or, or yeah, hospital. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's it's honestly thousands, hundreds of thousands. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's if you can stop someone here, well, they can get away with a very small treatment. Yeah. Rather than here, where they're hospitalised in an ICU, yeah, you know, it's it's huge, huge difference, you know. So, and I think that's what he's referring to, and the same with the eyes. Yeah, you know, it's um and um yeah, I I I, I think I think New Zealand First has always been spot on the money in that in that respect, and they and they're not coming in with great big slashing health reviews and all this. They're just coming out with those small things. Yeah, that can make a big difference. Yeah, like, and, like and good they're policy. Also, they're also just the right combination of, of size and um, co- idea to be able to be put into action um, reasonably easy most of the time. Correct. Yeah, um, and they're not extreme. Like I think Labor and National's problem, and nothing against either of them, is the fact that they tend to go for extreme ideas that. What? Don't have any middle ground yeah. in reality. They, 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 nothing against Labour. You know, this, some of the things they've been doing over the last twelve months, ah, uh, sorry, three years, have been really, really good. 
but at election time, they are the parties that tend to go for the for extreme the things. Yeah. I notice New Zealand First tends to sit in a bit more reality. Well, National well, go one way, Labor go the other. National tends to sit around what I would call realist approach to what they're going to say at election that they can do. Yeah, well, and as you said, 80% accomplished from between the last election and this. That says a lot about the policies themselves that um, they weren't too extreme, so therefore they weren't at a level that they weren't going to occur. No, that's right. Yeah. Um, 2,000 2, extra police. Yeah. $4.6 billion into the Defence Force. Yeah. You know, th- these things are, and, and they've had some really good wins. You know, and um, people's, people on Facebook at the moment are saying, oh, yeah, you went with Labour. Why'd you go with Labour again? Uninformed people obviously don't understand politics. It's about how many policies, not how many ministers you can have around the table, yeah. getting, getting paid in mu- the money. It's about how many of my party's policies, or the you know the party's policies, can we get over the line? Yeah, in the and next if, three if years? New Zealand first and if policies National are, offering are us none, similar to Labour's, yeah, if National is saying no, we're not going to let any of these through in the coalition yeah. agreement, we might let two through, yeah. and Labour is saying we're going to let eighty percent through. Well, well, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, where are you going to go? Yeah, you know I mean. Uh, <laughs> and and, so and I think part of that is because the policies are close enough to what Labour would want anyway in a yep. lot of cases. Yep. Yeah. Like like yep. Labour's not dead against NZ first no, no, policies. No, no, no. They sort of and I think this is where a lot of it comes down to oh yes, your policy is similar to what we had an idea about, so we can come to something that's not exactly ours, not one hundred percent yours. But a little bit in from either end. Yeah, we're, we're middle of the road. Yeah, you know, which is yeah, it's appealing. And um, and you know, you look at yeah, you know, we said about those drastic things. National oh, was it ten billion or twenty billion on the tunnels through the you know tunnel through the tower or a tunnel through the thing. They're, they're real nice to have. They're great. Yeah, you know, the voting's fantastic. We've got a big problem coming up with, with this COVID. You know, we've got a big problem about affordability. Yeah, and it's the same. Yeah, you know, if I go to regional council, it's the same as our flood schemes. They're suddenly becoming unaffordable. So, when when the water starts coming in across State High One, yeah, these are the things that affect central government, and this yeah. is what central government need to be thinking about: State High One, the rail network. Yeah, you know this to who are you to and from yeah. Auckland. What about when it's totally flooded because of, there's a few people behind those walls, farmers, paying. For those walls, yeah. The government at the moment are paying nothing towards those oh, walls. Okay. So that's you know that's another thing that I want to lobby in there. You know, it's just like yeah, we've got to start paying. It shouldn't be up to the ratepayers in Hamilton or anything. It should be uh, nationally. These walls are of national significance because they're protecting State Highway One, the rail, and all that. Yeah. But we've got this COVID stops um, communities from being isolated. Yeah, we've got COVID that we're going to have to pay for. So when they come out with policies like that, I sort of I sort of, I sort of wonder, you know, yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 yeah. Let's let's see, let's see what we have to pay back first, you know, yeah. because, um, you know, um, and that's where I think the primary producers, that's where I think the Hamiltons and the and the Waikato in general are going to do really, really well. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we're fortunate as a country in the fact that we're a bunch of islands in the Pacific, yes. right? Yeah. So and we pre- can easily, more easily than anywhere else, isolate ourselves from the rest of the world from the point of view of restricting incoming yep. people. And, and people want we, our product. And if we stick with that, because restricting travel from a tourism point of view um, doesn't affect the trade part of it. So we no. can still trade. Yep. And people um, want our goods. Yeah. yeah. People <laughs> want our goods. Yeah. Um, we just, for our own protection against COVID, need to be careful about people coming into this country and we still want goods from overseas. Yep. But we can do a lot more to produce um, things that other countries want or need, um, especially um, especially around food. And I think we now need to look at the fact that over the cu- coming up, tourism is not going to be a big thing. We need to take that tourism and turn it around and point it at Kiwis and make it more affordable for Kiwis to choose to go on holiday in New Zealand, mm. 
need to stop focus on trying to get overseas tourists and yeah. um, overseas students and all this sort of thing to the same to the degree we have in the past. And look after our primary producers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's going to involve um, uh, training Kiwis, correct, to go into uh, medical professions, primary producing. Um, Isn't you know, it exciting? The trades. Isn't it exciting? Trades? Yeah. And that's again New Zealand first, getting people into apprenticeships, yeah. starting up their apprenticeship schemes again. Yeah. You know, with the farming stuff, starting up farm cadets again. Yeah, you know, they're right behind it. And you would have heard Winston talk on Saturday about. Um, you know, the mum and dad farms in the Waikato. You know, yeah. We're still really blessed in the Waikato. We don't have the big corporate farms. We have a few down the south Waikato, but most of our yeah. farms are mum and dad farms. Yeah. Right? And we're so blessed in that respect because mum and dad, and Winston says himself, punches well above their weight and produces more than a corporate farm with three yeah. workers in, in Europe. You know, four workers. Yeah. Mum and Dad can produce more than that and outstrip them for supply, you know. So, yeah. We're, we're, because we're when it's a really... Mum and Dad farm, it's a. It's, Yes, it's a business, but it's more of a lifestyle. Well, your Scottish side's coming out. You know, they yeah. hunker down the hedge yeah. and they, you know, they, they, they spend everything local. Yeah. Everything's spent local. And they look after the community. And they look after the community. They put kids in schools. It's the same as in a city. Buying, first of all, local to your city if you can, and only going to overseas purchasing when you can't find it locally. Yep, and exactly what you just, you know, just touching on that is New Zealand first, again, stop the foreign ownership of our land. Or slow down the foreign yeah. ownership of our land. Because what we're slowly doing is stripping our communities of any value, and all of that value is heading offshore like our logs, like our logs are already yeah. doing. They go off unprocessed, and all the processing jobs and money and all that's made overseas. Right? Yeah, so, and that's, that's always had me puzzled because... There is absolutely no reason why we don't send what we send overseas isn't processed product. We don't be that processed meat, we don't processed own it. wood. We don't yeah. own it. But we used to. We used to, yeah. but we don't own it anymore. And that's what Winston said. We need to stop that. Yeah. Because we don't own it. You can't you can't and look I'm not picking on China or any other country, um, not picking out certain countries, but I'm gonna use China as an example. Yeah. Fonterra have Offices and, and farms over there. They're not allowed to buy the land. Yeah. You, you can't buy the land. They have no. to lease the land. Yeah. Right? But over here, the Chinese can come in, put in a dairy factory, um, New Bright Dairies, yeah. down the middle of the island, get water consent from Waikato Regional Council to produce baby milk powder, and go in direct competition to Fonterra in our own country. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but you can't do that in China, but no. we're, we're letting that sort of stuff happen here. And again, I'm just using China as an example, yeah. but, you know, because the Japanese, for example, own that timber. And they do the same thing. They, they ship it over there and get all the money out of yeah. it in Japan, which any astute owner would do. Yeah. But if you try to do the reverse in those countries, they make sure they keep as much of that in-house as they can, make it as awkward for you to, you know, to not yeah. quite as facilitate. If you take um, these water consents, to yeah. get um, um, pump and um, oh, water, for water out of the water water. springs, right? Yeah, you don't so, even yeah. yeah, okay. They pay three thousand dollars a year. That's it. Yeah. Fee cent fee. That is just that so is wrong. It. That is it. Nothing else goes into the community. Not yeah. one cent. So oh, and then they people, create are, buy, people and are going into dairies like and buying that water. Correct. Right? For more than petrol. And they're making a huge. Yeah. But yeah. they're not contributing to the to the country. Correct. Um, and yeah, that that wouldn't be so bad paying a, a three thousand dollar consent fee if it was a New Zealand bottling company. No problem. Fine. Because everything's going local. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, so yeah. So yeah. Just to round up. Um, yes. yes. I think. Yeah, we, we we can see that you definitely think New Zealand first have a key part part to play, and and. Kiwis thinking New Zealand first. Yeah, they said at the start, like Winston said, this government will not work. It'll be gone before lunchtime. Yeah. Well, it worked pretty well, and well. It's had a, it had the mosque attack. It had quite a few big, big things to deal with. You know, the mosque attack, COVID. You know, it's had some big yeah. stuff to deal with, and it's done pretty well. Yeah. And um, yeah, and yeah, they've they've handled those situations pretty damn well. 
yes, a lot of people on social media and set bitch and whine and carry on, but who cares about that? It's always the if same. You, if you look at the facts, they've done, handled them pretty well. New Zealand First has worked in well with the government in, yep. in how these things have been have been handled and dealt with. Yep. Um, and I think, yes, parties are always going to have a difference of opinion on some things. Absolutely. But the yep. key thing is, can you get over those differences of opinion and work together for the people of the country? Which is what Labour and New Zealand yep. First have done. And as yep. voters, we're we are solely interested in, in how our government is going to function for us first rather than overseas. Correct, yeah. Um, and for us as individual voters first rather than putting corporate entities above the people. And, and I think that's why you need that middle party? Yeah. The moderator. The first word I started the whole conversation with. Yeah. Moderation. Moderation. You need someone to moderate. You know, yeah. And, and it has to be a middle of the road party, and there's only one in there. That's the But yeah. Oh, thanks very much no, for your time. Thank you. And good no. luck in the, in thank the you. election. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah.